So today we're gonna to be rebuilding typeform.com. If you guys don't know what Typeform is, it's a form builder that allows you to send out forms that look pretty good. It's not just the typical one, two, three inputs. It's actually a nice experience for the user. So we're gonna be rebuilding this using Framer and Tilebit to help us build faster. Now, the sections that we have to rebuild here, the main ones is gonna be number one, our hero header, which has a video on the left, text on the right. We have a logo cloud right under there with Airbnb, MailChimp, Hermes, or Hermes, HubSpot, and Berries. And then we've got an H2 here, followed by some feature sections with, which also have videos. That is gonna be the bulk of the work. We also have some feature sections here with some testimonial, and then some cards here, some more logos, big numbers, and then the footer with the final CTA. So it's a pretty simple site, but let's go ahead and rebuild this in Framer, hopefully in under 10, 15 minutes. Let's see how we can do that. Okay, so I've got a file, brand new file here with a nav bar already inputted in. And the reason why I did that is just to save a little bit of time on the video. But anyways, you can just add in your own nav bar if you want, or you can do what I did, which is use the Tilebit component library. Now, this is a component library for Framer, Webflow, Figma, all the good stuff like that. So I just go ahead here and copied this and pasted it inside of Framer, just like that. And here we have the component itself. So let's go ahead and build the next section, which is gonna be this hero header. So to do that, we go back into Tilebit and I'm just gonna type in hero header. And you guys can use the framer layouts as they have them like this so for example we can just paste this in and we actually just want to move this to the right let's see if we can do that and here we would be pasting in a video now the good thing about framer is that you have this canvas where you can kind of spectate around everything which is fantastic. So it's actually, let's try to use as many framer components as possible because they are really good. But obviously if I've built a component library, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to use as much as I can, right? But anyways, here we can add a video and this we can just simply change the H1. So let's go ahead and just paste that in grab this comment and you'll see on the right side here that it's automatically changing all the text, even if we're not kind of manipulating those breakpoints, it's still gonna be updating the text for us and then get started, it's free. So we've got pretty close there, it's free. Something like that, delete that secondary. And we see that we have a, a shadow here on the framer button, but we don't actually have it inside of the real one. So let's see what we can do here. So for shadows, we've got realistic here, which is very nice, but we don't necessarily need it. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. And then here we have a conflicting issue because we're using tile bit for the nav bar and then framer components. I'm actually gonna get rid of the tile bit. We can just paste in a nav bar. This is gonna be a little bit more simple. Okay, so I added in one of the framer navs. It's not exact to what we need. We still need these two buttons here. So let's go ahead and add that in instead. So we can create a component here with this button. Variant one is okay. And then we go ahead and want to edit this. So we can go ahead and just paste it here, see how it works. Okay, and then paste another one. And then we have to edit this variant to to make sure that it has the secondary color that we need. So we can add in another variant here and we can call this instead of primary, variant one is primary, variant two can be secondary. So we're just gonna name the layers here. Okay, and then variant two can be fill with white. And then the text itself can obviously be that dark. We can use the same one. Okay, now we've got that. We can go ahead and pick, let's see. We can pick the correct variant. Okay, and change the text to be login and sign up. So let's see. So obviously if we go ahead and change in the text here, just like login, log out for these two individual buttons, which is what we need, we need different text. It's going to change the text for all of the components. So what we need to do is go back in here to this component and for the text itself, for the content, we need to click on that and plain text. So this can be text, placeholder, we can add something if we need to, but I don't think it's necessary. And then we're just gonna do that. So now, whenever we have that specific button that we need, so for example, this one, log in, log out, we can change the text to be log in, and then this one can be sign up, go back home, and then this can be get started, it's free. Get started, it's free, something like that. All right, so that's good to go. But now there's a pretty glaring issue. Number one, there's no video. Number two, the padding is off on this right section here. Number three, the text is gonna be wrong, of course. So now we're gonna use a tool called What Font. You can grab it on Chrome or Arc or anything like that. And we see that when we hover over this font, it tells us exactly what font that is. But this is probably gonna be a paid font and it's not necessarily important for this video to have this exact font. So we're just gonna go with something approximately close enough and we are gonna grab Inter 
is good, but we can maybe change it to regular and that's probably good enough. And then let's go back into what font. And so we can see the weight, the line height, the size. And this is really good when you are kind of recreating these sites because it tells you exactly the size of something that you're rebuilding, right? So let's go back, maybe make it 200 or 1200 in width. So we can kind of get an idea of how this is supposed to scale. Okay. And so this is actually going to be five REM, 80 pixels is five REMs, but that looks a little bit oversized. So for now we can just do 60 and we can reduce the padding here, but to, to actually find the padding, we need to go into, let's see, we need to go in here into inspect and we need to see exactly what these guys have done. And so this allows us to really get into the nitty gritty of the site. I'm going to make this full screen again. So let's see. Okay. So instead of changing the padding, we're just going to make this a little bit wider to fill in the space that we need because it's with pixels, it can be moved like that and manipulated, which is fine for this case. So let's go ahead into inspect again and see what we are going to be using. So font size 24. So let's go ahead and change that. Maybe we can make it a correct color medium, we can go to regular. Okay, we see it's 24, weight, line, okay. Color, we can make it a little bit lighter just to blend in. And I'm actually gonna reduce this because I think it might be a tiny bit different when we're actually building in this size. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit closer to us. Maybe we can make this a smidge larger. Worth filling out is in its own line. So you can kind of use that to your benefit. You can make it close as possible, okay. So that's starting to get real good there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just move on to the next section because we're eating up quite a bit of time here. Let's go ahead and do the logo, logo cloud trusted by. Thankfully, Framer has this, which is gonna save us some time. I'm gonna get rid of this top text. The logos here, you know what? We're gonna keep them as is, okay? And then we're gonna hold option and shift to reduce both or all sides. And you can see that here in real time but it would be nice to actually plug in the real logos because it would, I mean, it would look a little bit nicer, but I think for now, just for the tutorial, I don't want to eat up too much time. We're on limited space here, right? So we got to be quicker than that, but let's actually see the padding here. So padding, if we click on this button here, it allows us to hover over the site itself and kind of really get an idea of, of how they're doing it. So we can see that padding here, I can't, move the mouse because it's going to take it out. But you can see under the title padding, it says 64 and 16 pixels. So let's go ahead and do that. So for top and bottom, we can do 64 top and bottom and then 16, which is going to be one REM. Always thinking REMs, it's going to help you out in the long run. And then for these images, we're just going to reduce them by size a little bit. I'm just eyeballing this one. We can actually see that it's 99.7 by 35. So let's see how close I got there. So we can do 100 by 35. All right, we're getting there. So we have five logos here instead of six. Okay, close enough. Let's move on to the next one. So we're not eating more time. Insert. We're going to go into the sections here. So now I'm actually going to be using this component here. I'm just going to click on that and it's going to insert it directly into the page that we need. And the thing that we can see here is going to be number one, we need to kind of edit all the all the content to always fit the same style that we want. So for example, the H1 here isn't exactly what we're receiving from this paste, which is fine. But just keep in mind that it takes about a second to change those kind of things. So I believe it was regular. Okay, so it's regular here. We can go actually, I'm going to delete this one so that we can edit one of them first. I'm going to plug in, go into assets, go into project, drag in this button. No, that one. That's the one. All right. I just have multiple buttons here because we have a couple projects going on, but Let's go ahead and log in, log out. We can change this to whatever it wants to be. So in this case, I think all of them are going to be sign up. Okay, so then sign up. And now that we have this kind of layout that's already established, we can just copy paste all the information so that it's a little bit easier. Okay, I'm just going to X out of this so we can actually copy all the information. I'm going to go back in to inspect. Actually, I'm going to use the what font again. Click on that and it'll tell us size 48. And then for the body text, size 20. So for this one, it's going to be 48. So pretty close. But again, I'm just going to be using the the way that the, the text is actually being shown as the important thing here, because I think that tells more about the design than anything else. Okay. And then we got 20 and then text can always be adjusted. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that as well. But I'm seeing that the, the, the width here on this one is fixed. So we just want to do fit content or fill that's going to drag it all the way out, which is what we want. And then we're just missing this form survey. So I'm just going to duplicate that, paste it above, and we can just make it a tad smaller. I'm just eyeballing that one. Okay. But now that we have this, what we can do, which is pretty cool, is we can go into the layers, features, 
and we can just duplicate this stack just like that. Select the image layer, click on your right keyboard, and now you have the same exact layout just duplicated, which is exactly what we wanted. And now all we need to do is just paste in the information here and then just this final paste. And I just realized for some reason I did it backwards. So the, the top one has the image on the right. No worries, we can just change that really quick. One thing we're missing here is gonna be this H2. It says Typeform helps you understand customers. So let's go ahead and insert there, type something, type form helps you something like that. And so what we can do is we can either change this stack to be vertical. That way this is going to allow us to just work vertically, or we can just add on top of this another stack, but I think it's fine the way that we did it first. Okay. And then again, we're just going to be using what font to select you see that 64, but really we're just going to eyeball it anyways. So it doesn't really matter. So let's see, go into the text size pixel. It said 64, which I can respect, but I don't believe it's going to be that one. All right, whatever. 64 it is. Okay. We can reduce that with a stack. So we can add a stack. We can make the width of the stack to fill, and then we can align the text in the center so that we're getting a little bit closer. And that's actually pretty darn good, but let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding on the bottom here, maybe we can say something like 16 and then just go from there. All right, so maybe we can actually need to change this because the content actually matters in this case. So I'm, I'm actually gonna reduce this or delete this text and paste it in here because it has that kind of cascading effect already intertwined inside of it. And then we can always just paste in the new text. Okay, so now we've got that going on. Let's go ahead and change the size of the text back to what we wanted it to be 64. Okay, now we can see that it actually cascades down and it makes a little bit more sense. We need to change the padding though. So we can go 56 and then 46, something like that. And usually you wanna be a little bit more exact with these figures. You don't want it to be just like, oh, I'm just gonna do 64. But uh, in this case, it's fine. Okay, so I'm just fixing a couple things here. So I'm actually gonna go up here into fill so that the way that framework works is that anything you change on the top will cascade down from tablet and mobile so this helps us because we only need to change one thing for example here the fill or the fit or the fixed or whatever and it'll do it for the rest of them one thing i don't like in this case actually we can remove our opinion from the equation and see what Typeform did. Okay, so we've got the text on top, and that's actually really interesting. They have the text on top, the video in the middle, and then under the body text. So we're not going to do that because that would allow us, or that would mean that we need to build two of these components, which is possible, but I think for the video, it's a bit of a time crunch. So let's go ahead and just build it like this, which is how I usually build sites anyways, and it looks just as good. So next up is gonna be this testimonial slider. So we can just insert something from Framer so we can look up a testimonial, see what they've got. This one looks good. We actually don't need to drag it in. We can just click it and it'll paste in directly under it, but I decided to drag it in because why not? Okay, I'm just gonna paste in this review here so we can see what we need and I'm gonna grab a screenshot of this so I don't need to go referring back to it back and forth back and forth I'm gonna reduce that and let's see how we can actually change this to be exactly how we want it to be in terms of the styling with the images in there and, and all that stuff so realistically when we see this we think okay there's just this kind of rectangular container here I'm gonna get rid of that fill add in a border just so you guys can see but there's actually that plus we've got basically something like this where we have the text on the left and then this thing here is actually going to be an image so i can go into inspect and actually see if that's true we can see that that's an image so i'm just going to grab this image just like that copy this image and then i'm just going to paste it here for now just so that we have it we can actually get a little bit closer to what we need in terms of the layout so let's start getting this to where we need to be. I'm gonna paste this and put it in here because I think it's closer to, okay, so I'm just gonna delete this for now and then we can make this font a lot larger. Again, regular, bold, black, all that good stuff. Okay, so then here, we're gonna need the text to be left aligned, have this aligned to the left just for now. And then instead of fixed, we can go relative, go back into testimonials number two, and then we can just add this image inside of testimonials two, like that. Change the stack to be horizontal, and then maybe instead of relative, let's see, we can go fill, feels fine fit will be even better. And so what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna add a stack on top of this, or maybe these two can be the, the wrapper. And I'm just gonna use Command or Control C, pardon me, 
to swap out the background color to be the color that we need. So for example, here, just like that. And we're gonna add a pretty aggressive gradient. And that's getting us a little bit closer to where we need. Drag in the button here to our exact place. And I'm choosing my arrow key to make sure that we need, we place it exactly where we want it. The issue is with going super custom like this is that obviously things break layout wise. So let's see how, how they did it in this case. Okay, a little bit random, but let's do that like that. And then padding on top and the bottom can be maybe like 16 to start with 86 bottom 86. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Okay. And then for this case, we should want to go maybe fill. Okay. So I just made the text itself hundred percent width so that it can actually span the container that we need. And then inside of stack, we can actually go ahead and add in the padding that would make us content to our souls, reduce the circularness smidge, add in a little bit of batting right there and then make it a smidge larger. Okay. So that's getting us a little bit closer to what we need. The text is centered. So let's go ahead and replicate that. We can align the text center as well. Like here, go into all these text layers centered stack needs to be centered, of course. And then the sign up, we can actually make it fill. And that way all the buttons are just horizontally aligned for let's get rid of that. Okay. Okay. So now that we got that fancy, fancy testimonial section, I'm going to do one more section, which is going to be the footer because we're way above time. So let's see. Okay. So the footer should be pretty simple, but let's go ahead and use tile bit to save a little bit of time. So in this case, we're going to just type in footer and let's see which one is closest. So all we have here is a bunch of links and then the CTA is on top. Now the CTA isn't going to be exact, but what we can do is add in the links, which I think we can go with this one here. Framer. We have a couple of extra stuff, but I think it's fine. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead into the desktop and paste it there directly. Good to go. And the beauty thing about Talbot is that obviously everything works in a cascading manner. I'm going to unlink and replace, and then we can just get rid of this. Okay. So we got product templates, integrations, resources. So we can kind of imagine that I'm actually going to get rid of that and I'm going to make this stack fit the content. Okay. So now we can just duplicate this a bunch of times, which is a little bit closer to what we would have. But for now, I'm just going to reduce the amount of blocks that we have because some edits still need to be made. So in this case, the long link name is actually product. Get rid of that. And then this should probably be a smidge larger. We can add in its own stack inside of here just so that we can add in a smidge of padding. And then these can be pretty simple. And then for the stack here, we can add in the gap to make sense for the rest of the links. Sorry, not there. It would be here. So instead of space between, we can go by start and then maybe something like 10, maybe a little bit less. 10 was fine. I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay. So now what we can do, go into content and just duplicate it. And we can see what we got, if it lets me. So we got templates, I got integrations, resources, and get to know us. So templates, integrations, resources, get to know us. All right. And then we don't need this last one. So we just get rid of that. So let's see how that looks in here. So it's obviously all messed up because I decided to make it custom, but anyways, align the stack vertically as we would here. I'd like to see what they do though. Okay. So they do align it vertically as well, which is cool. Okay. So we're going to go back into home and we're almost there, but obviously this is going to be dark rather than rather than the white that we have. So what we can do is we can actually put a stack on top of this, just so that we're not editing the actual stack. We can put something on top of it and we can change the fill. If we get rid of the fill here, we can change the fill. And so now if we clean this up a little bit, we'll see that what we have here in the end is a pretty close approximation to the type form site. A couple things that we're missing that could improve this. Number one is going to be exact measurements for these kind of unique sections as well as the footage, the video that they have here. Now we could actually add this in if we save the video, but either way, I think in terms of the layout, that's the most important thing for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions about the workflow from this video, let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to have the link. I'm actually going to publish this right now so you guys can see it. Lavender head. Let's go ahead and change that to not be so weird, but I think it's fine actually. Okay. So now if we see this is a real life site, fantastic. And then these are actually working drop downs, which is quite good. Okay, cool. So now actually I want to add this in and we can inside, we can see. Okay. So then their breakpoint is a little bit earlier than ours, but anyways, I think it's fine just to see how as an exercise, how their, their site transforms from this desktop version into a smaller, actually make mine smaller. So if we actually do it side by side like this, make mine a tiny bit bigger. Okay. We can see that. Yeah, it gets pretty close. 
which is perfect, just what we need. So then yeah, the breakpoint changes a little bit when before we need it to. So we can actually just go ahead and change that with the different breakpoints. We can add in a new breakpoint if we wanted to, but anyways, I think it's fine. And then the footer as well. So apart from that, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Again, if you guys have any questions, comments, all that stuff, let me know down below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.